Hi guys, I hope that you're having a beautiful and wonderful and blessed day of the Lord. Today is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Okay, you guys, I'm going to be doing a series coming up of videos. And my next videos are going to be exposing demonic spirits. Okay, the first demonic spirit that I'm going to have that today on this video is about anger and rage okay so we're gonna dig right in the word the first thing that we have to understand is that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood okay so the first scripture that we're gonna go to today is Ephesians 6 and 12 and it says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So we have to understand that we do not fight against people. We are fighting against demonic spirits. We are fighting against principalities. We are fighting against authorities. We are fighting the good fight, right? Every born again believer, when you become a born again believer, did you know that you have enlisted in the army of God? Therefore, you have to be ready to battle, right? To battle what? These demonic spirits. Also, Matthew 12 tells us that we are houses. So therefore, demonic spirits can come in. If there has been an open door, it may have been way even in your past that there has been an open door that has let in a demonic spirit. But the great thing is, is that the only reason that these things are exposed is because light exposes darkness. Jesus is the light. And the reason that he exposes these things, the reason that he shows us these things to be exposed is because he wants freedom to come. He wants you to be set free today. So that is the whole reason in exposing the demonic realm and exposing demonic spirits to exposing these things so then they can be brought out in the light. Luke 8, 17 says that anything done in the light will be, I mean, anything done in the dark, excuse me, will be brought to light. I pray that daily. Lord, whatever is done in the dark, bring it to light in the mighty name of Jesus. Because anything that is brought to the surface, anything that is brought to light, it's for Jesus to come in and to deliver and to set free and to heal, right? Because guess what? The gates of hell will not prevail against you, right? Even though if there has been an area in your life that you are going to, in particular, maybe the one that I'm talking about today, anger and rage, if you start checking off, off some little boxes there and you're like, oh, you know, that's me, that's not shame. That's not condemnation. That is being exposed so then you can have it delivered. You can be delivered from it. It can come out in Jesus' name, okay? So the next scripture is 1 John 4 and 1. And it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. So we have to test the spirit, you guys. You know, there are times when, when people are like, how do I understand the voice of God? How do I hear the voice of God? How can I distinguish between the voice of God and the voice of the enemy? Okay, well, first and foremost, you have to understand that you have to be spiritually mature enough to discern, to have the gift of discernment. You have to have knowledge of God. So that is Hebrews 5.14. It says, but solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good and evil. So therefore, you need to know the attributes of God in order to be able to tell which voice is speaking. Because if we know the attributes of God, then we can know, oh my goodness, okay, well, God wouldn't do that. God wouldn't say that. God wouldn't make me do anything, okay? That's the, that's the number one thing. God never puts himself on you. God never makes you do anything. So if there is a voice outside of that that is trying to make you do something that is contrary to the word, that is contrary to the fruits of the spirit, okay? Love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, forbearance or self-control if there's anything that is contrary to that then that's another voice and that's the voice of the enemy so we have to be able to discern between good and evil we have to be able to be mature enough you know people perish for lack of what 
knowledge. And a lot of people do not have knowledge of the word of God. That's why the enemy comes in and he tries to make you not read the word of God. He tries to make you not pray. He tries to make you not worship, right? Therefore, you know that that's the enemy because it is to be a daily thing. We are to daily give praise to the Lord. We are to daily pray. We are to daily worship. We are to daily walk in the fruits of the Spirit, right? We are to walk as Jesus walked. Be ye holy as he is holy. 1 Peter 1 and 16. So I just wanted to lay a little bit of a foundation first to understand that this is for believers, okay? Christians can have demons. What did I just say? Christians can have demons. Christians do have demons. The whole ministry of deliverance is the ministry of Jesus. You can read all about, about that in Mark. It starts in 1. He, 139, he literally went from synagogue to synagogue, right? Doing what? Casting out demons. He was also laying hands on the sick. He was also, you know, there and, and willing to, you know, um, miracle signs and wonders followed him because of the fact that guess what? He was, he was, he's God. Jesus is God. All right. And he was the word that became flesh. And there is no name above him. There is no one higher, no one greater, no one like our God, the name of Jesus. So I, I'm telling you this today to understand that this is for believers. Okay. Deliverance is for believers. Actually, you can look at my, my, um, my, uh, my t-shirt also, and it has Mark 16 and 17. And it talks about that these things will follow those that believe. And you need to read that scripture. All right. So the first one that the Lord showed me in a vision a couple of weeks ago was the gorilla. And the gorilla is anger and rage. So let's dig right in, you guys, to anger and rage. The gorilla. The gorilla. It manifests itself as a gorilla. And this is the demonic spirit of anger and rage. I have so many notes on this, but I'm going to go as quick as I can to break this down the best way, according to the way that the Lord revealed it to me. We understand that um, like I said, first and foremost, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against demonic spirits. But guess what? We have the power and authority to trample over the snakes and scorpions of this world and not be harmed. There is hope in Jesus. That's the only reason why this is being exposed is because it's for Jesus to come in to heal hearts, to heal minds, so then people can be set free and walking according to his will and his way make straight the path right okay so a gorilla what do we know about a gorilla you guys a gorilla is territorial right so if you were to come up against a gorilla it's going to beat its chest it's gonna say you know what you're not getting past me i am bigger than you and guess what this is exactly what the demonic spirit of anger and rage does Anger and rage, it is mainly caused by things outside of our control. So whenever things don't go our way, whenever things are outside of our control, that, that demonic spirit of anger and rage will literally come out. And it comes out and manifests in the physical. It's a result of our either our own actions, emotions, or insecurities. It causes grudges, hatred, all do to unforgiveness it is ultimately from someone that does not feel loved and it causes a calloused waxed cold heart without love so ultimately a loveless heart and therefore there is no peace so the next scripture we're going to go to is first john 4 and 20. so let's get out our bibles get out your bibles with me I'm going to be going along with you. 1 John 4 and 20. That's in the back of the book. First John 4 and 20. And it says, 
If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. So let's skip a little bit further and let's go to 19. So 1 John 4, 19, it says, We love because he first loved us, talking about Jesus. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. So this is the first thing with the demonic spirit of anger and rage. It is, it's dominant. It is territorial. And it often comes out as word curses a lot of times when people act out in anger and rage not only do they act out physically they may even attack you um physically with you know wanting to hit you or wanting to harm you but they also use their mouth proverbs 18 21 tells us that we can bless or curse with our mouth right and also that people will eat the fruit of it so therefore what we speak what we say you know sticks and stones may break my bones but word will never hurt words will never hurt me is the biggest lie in the entire wor world because of the fact that word curses are what cause so many issues with people so because of this demonic spirit of anger and rage it can't manifest in the physical you can you can see it physically so this demonic spirit it comes out physically so people will they'll, they'll literally like try to reign over you you know what i'm saying it's like the hulk do you know the hulk um um in in the marvel character characters the hulk it's hulk smash when he gets angry he gets bigger and bigger and bigger and then he just smashes everything it destroys so something that has been built for a lifetime can be destroyed in a matter of seconds because of the demonic spirit of anger and rage. But like I said, if you are distributing these type of, of things, if you have anger and rage inside of you, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to be set free. It's only to be exposed so freedom can come. So with this demonic spirit, like I said, it cultivates into rage so it may start as just a little bit of anger and it starts to manifest in the physical but then it comes on to full-blown rage and it becomes like a monster if you have ever encountered anybody with this demonic spirit of rage it is like a monster it is like this person turns into this big huge gorilla and they tower over you they want to make you feel small. They want to do everything they can to destroy you. And like I said, they destroy with physical, like hurting, hitting, choking, however they can to hurt you. But also, also it's with their mouth. Like I said, you bless or curse with your mouth. So another scripture, Ecclesiastes 7, 9. Do not be quickly provoked in your spirit for anger resides in the laps of fools right that is what the word of god says anger resides in the laps of fools so therefore when we allow that anger that rage to come up it's foolishness you are acting like a fool right because you have given into your emotions and we know that we cannot walk by our emotions you guys jeremiah 17 literally tells us it literally tells us that we cannot walk by our emotions we cannot because of the fact that our heart, our heart is deceitful above all things. Our hearts are deceitful. And therefore, our, our emotions will make us walk down the road of destruction. We cannot follow our heart. Okay? We cannot follow our heart. This world will tell you, follow your heart. Follow your heart. That's not what the word of God tells you. It's contrary to that. That means it's in opposition of that. You do not follow your heart. All right? And 1 Samuel 16 and 7 says that God knows the heart. He knows the motives. He knows the truth behind it, right? So therefore, we have to set him. Proverbs 4.23 says to guard our hearts. We have to set him right there, that guard. That's a watchman. We have to set God as the watchman over our heart. Because if we are to just walk by our heart, it's going to be destructive, you guys. We're going to mess things up. That's why God is greater. That's why God is bigger. That's why God knows best, right? What is better 
Jesus is better. So therefore, he knows our heart. So we have to allow him to come in with his big old ice cream scoop and scoop out that anger and scoop out that rage and allow, allow him to remove all the callousness, remove that spirit, that stone heart, and to put a new spirit inside of you. That is Ezekiel eleven nineteen, 19. And I always tell everybody, please, please, please hear me. If you hear anything, because this prayer works, pray Ezekiel eleven nineteen. 19. Pray that the Lord will remove the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh or for someone else. If they are exhibiting these things, then their heart is calloused. It's a loveless heart and it's all due because of love. And like I said, nine times out of 10, it started at childhood. It started as trauma, as being a child and being neglected, as being a child and being abandoned, as being a child and feeling like you were never heard. You were never, everything was just in chaos all the time. You were likely abused and you were pushed down and pushed down and pushed down to the point where you wanted so bad to be loved, but you don't know how to be loved. So therefore it comes out in anger and rage. It comes out in emotion, because, but you're screaming out saying, I want to be loved. My heart is, is, is a heart full of stone. I need Jesus to come in, take that ice cream scoop to remove that heart of stone and give me a heart of flesh. That's the prayer that you need to pray for yourself and for others. Ezekiel eleven nineteen, and I am a testimony. I have so many testimonies of the goodness of God and what he's done just through praying that scripture, Ezekiel eleven nineteen. 19. Ask him, Lord, please remove that heart of stone and give me a heart of flesh to put that a new spirit inside of me. What's the new spirit? The Holy Spirit, the new wine, to put the new wine inside of me so that I no longer walk by my emotions. Because when we have that heart of stone, we're going to walk by our emotions and it's going to come out as anger and rage. So like I said, anger and rage, it says just hit something, Hulk smash, leave, 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 my way. How you react when others do not do what you want. When things are out of your control, nine times out of 10, anger and rage will come about. Anger is a ticking time bomb and it destroys all in its path. It's like a whirlwind. It sucks everything up. It spins around, it sucks everything up. It spins everything around and it scatters every broken piece wherever they may fall and it doesn't even care. That's what anger and rage does. A lot of times when people have anger and rage, they completely black out. They don't even remember what they've said to you or what they've done to you. That is the truth. It's like a whirlwind and it's like a tornado. They come in and everything just sucks up in it. It just spins around and it just destroys and it just lets everything fall the way it falls. It's dominating, it's territorial. Just like a gorilla beats its chest when someone may threaten its family or its territory, it sends the warning, do not mess with me. It towers over you, making you and others seem small. So we're going to talk about now in the scripture about some times when anger has come about and it has been exposed through scripture. So we have Moses. Did anybody know that Moses struggled with anger? So Moses, although a prophet of God and a deliverer, he didn't deal with his anger and it ended up robbing him of the entrance into the promised land. There are two occasions that we're gonna talk about. Moses became angry and his anger was hot and he cast the tablets out of his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountains. That is Exodus 32, 19. So Moses destroyed the 10 commandments in a matter of seconds due to his what? anger and rage that is the power of anger and rage you guys the power that it literally overcomes you and something that it may take like i said a lifetime to build can be destroyed in a matter of seconds it is a destroyer it seeks to destroy that's what anger and rage do it seeks to destroy anger makes you act out physically and with your mouth, like I said, Proverbs 18 and 21, we kill or we build with our tongues. The next time that we're going to talk about Moses is in Numbers 20, 2 through 5. The Israelites were grumbling and complaining again about the lack of water. They had 
what let they didn't have the water to drink they wanted water to drink right they were they were grumbling all the time they were they did they were sick of manna they were sick of bread so they wanted quail you know jesus delivered them or god delivered them and they they were you know going getting ready to go to the promised land and they're just grumbling and complaining and god gave moses and aaron very clear instructions so god gives moses clear instructions Instead of listening to the clear instructions due to Moses' anger that had not been dealt with, he heard God wrong. He heard God wrong. He heard God, what God spoke, but there was another voice that was speaking to him, and it was the voice of anger. It was the voice of the spirit of anger, and therefore he was disobedient. He was disobedient. So not every time, that's why you have to have discernment. You have to know what voice is speaking to me. Is God speaking to me right now? Or is anger and rage speaking to me right now? Is it the demonic spirit that is speaking to me right now? You have to be able to discern. You have to test every spirit. Because if Moses would have stopped and listened fully with his Holy Spirit ears, then he would not have been walking in disobedience. Anger and rage makes you walk in rebellion and disobedience. Because why? Because you walk by your emotions. You're listening to your emotions, your heart, not your spirit. Okay? So, Moses ended up striking the rock. Right? He did not listen. He did not listen to what, what he said. He ended up striking the rock twice. And therefore, guess what happened? He didn't get to enter into the promised land. His reward was revoked. His reward was revoked. And he ended up dying and not making it to the promised land. And Joshua had to take up the mantle. If we walk by our emotions, we cannot clearly hear God. Moses struck the rock two times. And that was not the instructions. We cannot walk by our emotions. Like I said, Jeremiah 17 and 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who knows it? The Lord knows it. The manufacturer knows it. The one who created it knows it. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Right? You're going to eat the fruit of whatever you're listening to. Do you hear me today? You're going to eat the fruit of whatever voice you're listening to today. So if you're listening to the voice of God, you're going to have those bearing, bearing good fruit. But if you are listening to the voice of the enemy, you're going to bear bad fruit. Right? Disobedience. Rebellion. 1 Samuel 16, 7. God looks at the heart. He knows the motives. And Luke 6 and 45 says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So like I said, when someone is bound in anger and rage, that mouth just flaps, flap, flaps. They say so many things they don't mean, hurtful things to destroy you. And it's those word curses because curses are real also. And you can be delivered from curses today in the name of Jesus. There is deliverance from curses, from generational curses. There is deliverance from demonic spirits today in the mighty name of Jesus. He is the one who sets us free. Jesus, who the Son sets free, is free indeed. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Who is the truth? Jesus is the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And his name is above every name. So those demonic spirits can be cast out. You can be set free. Those word curses can be broke off of you in the name of Jesus by the blood of the lamb, by the blood that was shed on that cross. It breaks every curse in the mighty name of Jesus. Generational curses from the third and fourth generation. You can read that in Exodus 34. It talks about the generational curses from third and fourth generation. Those things can be broke off of you right now in the name of Jesus. You can be a bloodline breaker. You can say, you know what? This was in my family all those generations ago, but it's stopping with me. So then my children and my children's children and therefore and therefore do not have to succumb to these things. Do you hear me today? I hope that you are hearing me today. 
I hope that you are hearing what the Lord is speaking today. All right. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. John 18, 10 through 11. This is another example. Peter. Peter cuts off the ear of the high priest's servant when they came to arrest Jesus. Peter acted out in anger and rage. And because of Peter's anger not being dealt with, it caused him to guess what? Deny Jesus. In John 18, 15 through 18. You guys, anger and rage has consequences. And guess what? Peter walked with Jesus. Peter was with Jesus 24 seven. He walked with him, he talked with him, he was able to touch him. Jesus even said, Peter, you know, cause his name was Simon. Peter, upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. But guess what? Peter had anger, Peter had rage. And it caused him to walk in what? Disobedience and rebellion. See, you can walk with Jesus. You can talk with Jesus. He can be your bestest, closest friend, but he cannot heal what you will not allow to reveal. I will say that again. He cannot heal what you will not allow to be revealed. And what that means is you can be walking with Jesus, reading all the scripture, doing all the right things, praising him, giving him honor and glory, but you're still acting out in rage and anger and you don't understand why. It's because an open door has been opened to a demonic spirit of anger and rage, okay? And it comes up out of nowhere and you don't understand why, but it's something. There is a legal right. And what do I mean by that? That is a legal right means that there is a reason why it's staying. And only you, the owner of your body, right? Jesus is, is, is the owner, of course, but I'm saying you have to allow Jesus to remove it. He sees it. He knows it's there. He's exposed it, but it takes you to seek deliverance, to seek healing, to seek Jesus. It takes you. It takes action by you because you can be doing all the right things, but if you are not laying at his feet, calling out to him and saying, Jesus, it's here. Anger and rage, I don't want it anymore. I don't want it anymore. I don't want to act out in anger and rage. I don't want to yell at my husband all the time. I don't want to yell at my kids all the time. I don't want to do these things. What is causing this anger, Lord? He will reveal it. He will reveal it so you can be set free. That is the power of Jesus. That's the power of Jesus. He exposes so freedom can come. You also need wisdom. Proverbs 14, 16, and 17. Proverbs 16 and 32. Proverbs 22, 24, and 25. And Ephesians 4, 26, and 27. There needs to be wisdom. Wisdom has to come whenever this demonic spirit is trying to take over you. So let's go to Ephesians 4. This is wisdom of the Lord. I hope that you guys are, hope that God is revealing things to your hearts and your minds today. Like I said, this is exposing so you can be set free. Ephesians 4, 26 and 27 says, In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. So, like I said at the beginning, a lot of times anger and rage is due from unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Do you know that Jesus forgave you? If you are a born again believer, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that your heart of stone is turned into a heart of flesh so then you can let go of every hurt, of every pain, because that, a lot of times, I've seen it in deliverance all the time. Do you know that demonic spirits will stay because of unforgiveness? You have to let go and let God. You have to let go. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that what they did was right. It doesn't mean that you weren't hurt and you weren't 
traumatized or PTSD or, or whatever it may be, but it's time to let go. It is time to forgive so that anger and rage can go. That's the legal right. The legal right is unforgiveness. Forgive those that hurt you because guess what? Jesus forgave you. He forgave you even though we were yet sinners, right? Christ died for us, Romans 5 and 8. Even though we were yet sinners, he died for us, you guys. He forgave us of all of our sins. So we have the ability to forgive others. If you are in prison today with anger and rage, let those doors open. Don't allow yourself to continue to be stuck and bound and imprisoned with anger and rage. Allow Jesus to come in to, open, to fling wide those heavenly gates, to fling wide those prison doors to come in so you're no longer bound because that unforgiveness is causing you to be imprisoned. It's causing you to be a prisoner. You have to overcome today. 2 Corinthians 3.18 But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So seeking the Lord by allowing Him to take that ice cream scoop out to remove all unforgiveness, grudges, and hatred. For him to give you a new spirit and a new heart made of flesh to remove the heart of stone that has been waxed cold. That's what I told you again, Ezekiel eleven nineteen. Allow him to deliver you by forgiving others and forgiving yourself. So anger and rage also comes out when we don't forgive ourselves of things. Things that we have done in the past. Things that we may have done five minutes ago. I'm telling you there is grace for you. I'm telling you there is forgiveness for you. Call out upon the name of Jesus today. Ask him. Ask, seek, and knock. Ask him and seek him today wholeheartedly. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek him first today. Ask him and he will do it, you guys. He will remove. He will remove it from you. And then you'll be free in the name of Jesus. Ephesians 4.32 Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Other scriptures that you need to read on forgiveness are Mark 11.25, Matthew 18.25, 6 and 14, Matthew 6 and 14, sorry, Colossians 3 and 13. Guard your emotions. That's the next part. We have to guard our gates. Remember I told you you have to set Jesus as the watchman over your heart. In doing so, you have to set him as the watchman over your gates. And what do I mean by that? Set them over your eyes, over your ears, over your mouth, over your mind, over your hands, over your feet, over your soul, over your spirit. We have to set him as the watchman, you guys, because we have to be careful little eyes what we see. Be careful little ears what we hear. Be careful little mouth what we say, right? Because the Father up above is looking down in love and He knows. He knows. That's why He has to be the watchman. Because if we're walking by our heart, then our eyes are going to deceive us. Our mouth is going to deceive us. Our ears, our mind is going to deceive us. You guys, it's all in the mind. But guess what? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10. 3 through 5. It says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient. Take it and rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus. When that thought comes in, take it, bind Matthew 18, 18 through 20, bind and loose in the mighty name of Jesus. You have the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead living in you, Romans 8 and 11. So therefore, you have the power and authority to trample over the snakes and scorpions of this world and not be harmed, Isaiah 10 and 19. Also, Isaiah 54 and 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, Psalm 91. Read it, read it and proclaim it and declare it over your home. Isaiah 53, read it and declare it and proclaim it that by your, his wounds, Jesus's wounds, 
his wounds, his blood that shed on the cross, you are healed. You are whole in the mighty name of Jesus. So deliverance comes and healing comes. That's what Jesus does. He sets the captives free. And we are also called, Luke 4 and 18, to set the captives free. We are called to deliver those that are oppressed, to preach the gospel, right? We are called to do these things so then people will not be in prison any longer, right? Jesus doesn't want you in, in bondage any longer. Break free from the spirit of anger and rage today. And it says, and we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. You guys, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6. You need to understand our weapons are not carnal, right? We have Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. The armor of God. Put it on every day. Every piece is Jesus. Every piece is Jesus. He is our helmet of salvation. He is our righteousness. He is our peace made with the gospel, right? He is our sword. He is our shield. Whew. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. We are overcomers. We're not victims. We are overcomers. That's what we do as believers in Jesus. So by exposing anger and rage straight today, the hope is for you to receive deliverance. If you need prayer, if you need deliverance, I would be more than happy to walk you through that. I'd be more than happy to pray with you. You can email me at kingdomunited023 at gmail.com, night or day. I am available. So if you need it, if you need another sister to come in agreement with you, I would be more than happy to come in agreement with you so you can be set free in the name of Jesus. And all glory goes to him. All glory goes to him. But I'm also going to link, I'm also going to write down some prayers that you guys can pray for deliverance. I have a whole list of some that I've written up. Prayers for deliverance. Also how to call upon angels for deliverance. I'm going to link all of these things in the description box for you guys. And like I said, deliverance is for the children. It is the bread of the children. It is the children of God that need deliverance. And we are called to set the captives free. We have to understand that there are more scriptures that have so much more wisdom about these things. You guys can read James 1, 19 through 20, Ephesians 4, 31, Proverbs 22, 24 through 25, which I had already um, put up above, but I will link all of these in the description box also. But hurt people hurt people. And past hurts, they just don't go away, you guys. Sometimes we hold on to them and we allow them to fester into an infection. And that infection becomes anger and rage. But guess what? I know the one that can heal that infection. I know the one that can set you free today. And his name is Jesus. And I pray over every single person that listens to this, Ezekiel eleven nineteen, 19, that the heart of stone will be turned into a heart of flesh and that he will put a new spirit in you. And I pray that you have a wonderful and blessed day. Bye-bye.